This episode of What the Tech is brought to you by Slack. Slack is a messaging app which brings together all your team's communication into one place, making work simpler and more productive. Go to slack.com to learn more. What the Tech. Hey everybody, welcome to What The Tech. I'm Andrew Zarin. Of course, I'm joined by the one, the only, Mr. Paul Therod. How you doing, Paul? Pretty good. You were in New York on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. I I'm missed to be you. in Japan. I know, I know. I missed I you on Tuesday. off on that trip again. I, you got ripped off. I was really uh, jealous, actually, that you were going on that trip to Japan, because I want to yeah. go to Japan. Um, but you decided you were not going. You could not go for... I don't remember what reason, but you didn't go and you came to New York. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I could go be right, exactly. Yeah, you came to New That's York uh, yeah, yeah. for the HP event that was on Tuesday, which we'll talk about. Um, yep. I was very impressed, actually. I had a very, very impressed by the lineup. Um, there's certain things that we can't mention, right? Certain devices. Mm, is that true? I don't know. I think it's all out. Uh, okay. I know that some were still under embargo. In- like what? <laughs> like the omen? Like the omen? Or I may be wrong. I don't think. No, no. I think that's all. Okay. I think it's all. We'll talk about that. Uh, we'll talk about the Google event, obviously. Uh, a couple things about Apple that I got a lot of feedback over our last two shows regarding Apple and, mm-hmm. uh, and I guess awesome the, the decline, really, oh, more than anything yeah. else, uh, which I want to touch okay, on. So that. I have a big thing about that for today that yeah. I can share with you. Is if I could just figure my hair out. Your hair looks beautiful, actually. You look beautiful. So awful. Uh, and I'm drinking today, so that'll My that'll be helmet. an extra bonus. But before we continue, Paul, I want to welcome a new sponsor to the show. And luckily for me, I use this. Uh, I've been using it for about two weeks now at my job, and it just so happened that they're also advertising with us, which is excellent. I actually I heard about it on another podcast, and that's Slack.com. I heard it on another podcast, and I, you know, I started incorporating my at, at my job because we have a major problem with photos and communication between different departments and and it, it we, it's a big problem because there's so many different moving parts and it's so hard to kind of share uh the information that i have amongst everybody in the workspace uh with slack it makes it super easy slack is a messaging app which brings all your team's communication together giving everyone a shared workspace where conversations and organ an organization can happen and it's easily accessible whether you're uh, regardless if you're doing uh, applications like Salesforce, Zendesk, or even Google Drive, it makes it super easy to incorporate. You could do over a thousand apps uh, integrated into Slack.com. Uh, here's a great example. So we have a lot of imaging every week that needs to be updated. And I got very tired of sending an email because you send that email by the end of the week, that email's buried, and everybody's now messaging you about what was in that email, what images were in there. It, it becomes very difficult to kind of uh, manage well with Slack, they make it super easy because no more going through, you know, a tedious amount of emails to find that one message uh, over over the week. They make it very easy to find stuff, and they want you to try it out. Go to Slack.com to check it out. If you if you and your company are looking to kind of have this seamless integration amongst different departments and communication, this is the service to use. That's Slack.com. Paul's used Slack actually, and and so have I. Thank you to Slack for supporting What the Tech. Uh, Slack, where work happens. And you know what does not happen here? Work. So it may happen on <laughs> Slack, but there is no work happening here. Uh, sure. Let's talk about the Google event first. Um, this yes. was, you know, it, it left me. Hmm. It, it left me thinking the same thing I was thinking a week ago, and that's what phone do I buy? What Android oh, phone I do I buy? Because I'm going to tell you. Um, not blown away by this. I know that you you have a very different opinion about the Pixel mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. than I do. So I want to know right. what stood out. Well, I have, the, I have the correct opinion, Andrew. Is that what you mean? <laughs> yes, that's what I mean. I mean, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. So w- you pre-ordered this immediately mm-hmm. as the event was mm-hmm. happening. And I want to ask yep. you why this over, let's say, the SA Plus or the yep. Note? Uh, because it's a combination of things. Um, all of those cam- all of those phones have excellent cameras. I think that if photography was job one, you would do well by any of those devices. I think they're really great. 
Um, the thing that the Pixel has over the the other two, uh, because I think that you know this is a rating like from DXO Mark and all that kind of stuff. And I, but the, those things are all pretty close. I'm not going to worry about you know 98 versus 90, whatever the sure. other scores. Uh, it's it's uh, let's just agree that the, they're all they're all great. It doesn't matter. Um, but it's the combination of that ca- uh, capability with the phone. The, the new styling, which, you know, the 18 by 9 tall display, which you get on those other devices too, and uh, Project Fi uh, accessibility, which is a big deal for me because it's so transparent and so inexpensive. It works so seamlessly in Europe. I spend four, at least four weeks a year of a year in Europe, or internationally anyway. Um, I didn't get a chance to use it this week in Japan, but had I, that would have been my fifth week uh, international this year. So, um that stuff is important to me. Yeah. You know, it's, it's so important that I might actually, I will say I would give up other things that might be beneficial to other phones. You know, for example, um, I'm actually not sure of those phones, but you know, the new pixel doesn't have a headphone jack, which I think is kind of a mistake. Yeah. Um, that's one of the, the pain points on using the iPhone seven plus that I have now using the new iPhone, certainly, um, using a bunch of new phones. And so, there's a little bit of an unknown to that because now we're talking about a USB-C adapter, a dongle, hmm. um, how well that works, you know, how often I'll forget it. You know, I kind of, I hate that crap. So, you know, we'll see. But I, but those other things weigh so heavily for, to me that it just kind of put it over the top. Yeah, so, I mean, it's, it's a fine device. It's a fine-looking device. Uh, there is some aesthetic differences between the Pixel and the Pixel XL. Uh, the screen, I guess, even even with the bezel, right? It's not exactly the same phone. The bezel's different. Uh, the hardware is similar, but the but the overall, you know, it's interesting. They 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 attacked Apple for kind of selling you two different phones in their yeah. presentation, but they kind of are selling two different phones. So I, I thought I thought that was a weird uh weird shot at it. And also last year, I remember that they were talking about how they have a headphone jack. And it made a big deal out of having a headphone jack compared to the to the iPhone. But this is the trend. This is where everybody's going. They're going thinner, so they're removing the headphone jack for whatever reason. Because you know that adds so much more, so much more size to the phone. It's a nice looking phone. I just don't know if this is the one. You know, is this the best Android phone on the market? No, uh, no. Uh, and and you know, I think that's the point, right? It's the best Android phone on the market for me, I think. Right? I don't have yeah. it yet, so yeah. let me let me reserve judgment on it till I actually get it. But but for my own personal requirements, this is the one that matches up with the things that matter most to me. You know, um, part there are other things I didn't mention, and I, I just kind of hit the big ones. But you know, the pure Android experience is important to me. I want that, not the Samsung, whatever it's called. You know, it it's not that the Samsung UI is terrible. It's just I just don't want the Samsung UI. I want pure Android. I don't want Bixby when I swipe over to the left or hit that button. I want the Google Assistant. I, that's one reason the the Samsung stuff is a little tough. I don't like where the fingerprint reader is on the Samsung devices. It's right next to the camera. You are yeah. going to hit the camera. You're going to make it smudgy. That's terrible. Google gets that right. That fingerprint reader isn't exactly the right location. Um, it, none of those things that I just listed are the reason, right? But they, but they, they're supporting reasons, right? They kind of add up. Now, everything I just said, there are going to be people who disagree with it. You know, some of it or all of it, whatever, and that's fine. We all have our own. Um, you know, requirements or needs or whatever wants. And, but that's the beauty of the Android side of the fence, just like it was the beauty of the windows side of the fence back when PCs were a big thing, uh, is that sheer amount of choice. You can get whatever you want, yeah. you know, and if you can't afford these phones, by the way, and let, let's be clear, I literally can't afford this phone either, but I'm going to do everything I can to this is like the worst possible time for me to be spending money, but, um, uh, it meets a need, um, it meets my needs, you know, and if you can't afford it, um, you have other choices that are great and including great mid range choices like the one plus including great low end choices like various moto phones and others. So there's a lot of stuff out there. Um, yeah. And so it, it's, you know, best is kind of a tough thing to say, but best for me, I think so. I think, yeah, so. I mean, for me, it's still, it's between this, the S eight plus and the note and, uh, you know, the camera is very important to me that, that, that's a major, major plus for me. But, uh, I thought it was interesting. They didn't go with a dual camera. They dual lens. They went with dual sensors on this camera. 
and they're doing portrait mode uh, very similarly to how Apple does it. Uh, I'm curious to see what the quality of this portrait, you know, if the portrait mode is going to be. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm very, very curious about that because maybe this is the way to go. Maybe you don't need two lenses, two, uh, two lenses on these cameras. Maybe just one is good enough. It does the job. Uh, I don't. I thought it was very interesting that they got a, that high of a score on the camera. I was very surprised well, by that. That doesn't surprise me. The, the Pixel was until about a month ago the highest rated camera still from last year. Yeah, it was a 90, um, right? At that uh, current. I don't remember. They, they changed their scoring methodology, but the, the last year's Pixel was the highest rated camera on a smartphone until about, whatever, 30 days ago or something. Uh, in the past, th- uh, the Apple came out when it first came out new number one score the note 8 tied it uh about two days ago (laughs) and uh now the new pixel has a significantly higher rating than any of them and that doesn't surprise me because the the original pixel camera remain is still today excellent it's amazing yeah uh there were other things that they announced like uh like wireless earbuds uh they're entering into that but it's connected it's not like how apple has the, the individual ones this is actually connected you loop behind your head uh, they announced a thousand dollar, a thousand dollar Pixel Book uh, that happens to have sixteen gigs of RAM and uh, up to five hundred and twelve gigs, uh, gigabytes of PCIe based uh, SSD storage for you know yep. when you need all that horsepower to w- browse the web. Right. <laughs> what do you think of that? Um, I know this is their showpiece, but no, no. I, I honestly, I think they. I think they screwed this up pretty badly. Um, it, it's expensive because it's a real PC, right? So it has, you know, like you said, ex, you know, big high-end parts, um, lots of storage and everything. Um, you don't need that to run Chrome. Um, anyone who has a low-end Chromebook will tell you that the Chrome OS runs wonderfully on a very low-end computer. I think the point of what they're doing here is to, well, two things. One, to recognize the reality that Android has different requirements on a PC platform. And that you're going to need that horsepower and that storage for all of your Android apps and for all of your uh, data. You know, that, you know, in the past, if you're going to listen to Spotify on your Chromebook, you would use the web version of Spotify, I guess, and you would stream your music. Well, now you have local storage. You can download music and listen to it offline, just like you can on a PC. Um, and so, you, you know, there's a different kind of requirement. But the, oh, I should say the other thing is just uh, to sort of establish the notion that, um, Chrome OS is like a first-class citizen in the you know the PC world that yeah. it's on par somehow with uh, Windows or Mac OS. I'm not sure if it's quite there yet, but you know, okay, fine. Um, I, I just feel like it's too expensive, and Very, yeah. it's too expensive for like a 12.3 inch device. Like I, uh, they need to have different size devices. You know, this is one thing Microsoft has kind of figured out that. You know, just having a single Surface Pro type device isn't enough. You know, you need laptop style, bigger screens, um, and that those are more applicable to a wider range of users. Um, 12.3 inches is too small. And I think they went that way because it's a tablet sometimes. It's a sort of tablet, you know, with the pen and everything. And uh, once you get up to 13 inches, those things become a little bulky and unwieldy. But I, I just, I'll never be able to use that thing. It's too small. Yeah. Uh, comes in an i5 and an i7. It goes anywhere from a thousand bucks to almost seventeen hundred dollars, sixteen fifty. So, uh, not cheap at all. Uh, they also did announce a new lineup of Google Home devices: uh, a very small Google Home Mini and a Sonos-like Google Home Max. Uh, the Sonos-like device is a is four hundred dollars. Uh, yeah. it does come with 12 months of free YouTube music, which, uh, okay, fine. Uh, very expensive, $400 for essentially just yep. speakers. Uh, well, no, no, that's not fair. So okay. it's a, it's a Google assistant device. So it's like a Google yes. home. Okay. Um, it's part of a connected home speaker system, right? With like, in fact, this is what I use at home. So I have stereo speakers in here, uh, that are on a Chromecast audio. I've got stereo speakers out in the sunroom that are on a Chromecast audio. I've got integrated Google Cast uh, capabilities in my soundbar and my TV, and those are all one thing. I can play music through all of them at the same time, right? So you, the whole house could be filled with music. Um, this is them trying to compete with the HomePod and with Sonos, right? And uh, yes, it's expensive. It's I'm sure it's aimed at audiophiles. I would say it's way too early for anyone to trust Google for this kind of thing. Yeah. But what this is is something that can be alone or in a pair 
um, you know, kind of a nice high end audio file type system. Maybe like we haven't seen it or, you know, seen yeah, it I'm curious yet, to but. see what they say about the audio quality. Um, yes, yeah, that, that's know. really what it comes down to. But $400, you know, you have a lot it's of tough. options here and you can connect it to a Chromecast any, uh, a device. You know, receivers now have Chromecast capabilities. You can get yep. a nice receiver that does a lot more, oh, yeah. has a lot more no, horsepower I, I, and a speaker. And literally you today, I outlined the fact that I use a $99 pair of um, powered bookshelf speakers that sound better than a Chromecast, that sound better than a Sonos, connected to a $35 audio, uh, what do you call it, Chromecast audio. Yeah. So for $130, $135, I have the equivalent of what in the Sonos world would be about $800 worth of equipment. Yeah. And it's... There's no comparison, right? Yeah. And so I I don't mind Google doing this because there are cheaper options in that world. Like the problem on the Apple side of the fence is there aren't, right? Remember we had that conversation about AirPlay and AirPlay power speakers and stuff. And those things are very hard to find. Yeah. So you could buy that Apple wireless device that adds AirPlay or whatever to something, but those are expensive. Um, you can buy the Apple HomePod when it comes out, but that's 400 bucks. Yeah. So... You know, uh, to me, the Google e ecosystem is open, and so they can make a premium thing, great. They make low-end things, like the speakers and the home devices are, you know, they're okay, whatever. Uh, but you can put them on any speakers you want. And that, to me, that's just a great open system. It's fine. Yeah, I, it, it's, it is what it is. Uh, I, I, I was shocked I had very little interest in that device. And, you know, I, I, I'm big into audio stuff. I have a very nice system here at the house. I, I had very little interest in it. Uh, the other thing um, was a camera that they announced, right? They announced this little camera that you clip on and you just let it record everything. And it determines what the important moments are. And it kind of makes like a, a collage of th of important moments. Right. Um, it, it has its it has an algorithm that it determines, I guess, if you're moving or whatever it is. Uh and people were very concerned where this is going. And I did some homework, and you don't have to worry. It doesn't It doesn't put everything in the cloud. You decide what goes to the cloud. Right. So if there's an intimate moment happening, and you have this thing running. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I actually think that's a cool little thing. I mean, I'm not going to get one. Yeah. Um, but I, 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 you know, if I had little kids, and I could picture attaching that thing like the dog collar or whatever. Yeah, put it on the, the dog, put it on the kid's head. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. and years ago, um, my wife gave my son... I guess it was probably a disposal camera and he, and she just gave it to him to so go around the house and take pictures. And so he went around and he snapped photos. He was probably three or four or five years old. I don't know, some little kid kind of thing. And so it, it was really it to this day, it's fascinating to look at these pictures because yeah. it's like a picture of my wife's knees. It's a picture of, you know, the cabinet as it looks to him. Cause he's looking up at it. Like we always look down on the, on yeah. the counter and he's like such a tiny kid at the time. Um, I, the perspective that he had on our world, it was our house and outside right, and stuff. Yeah. You know, he walks up to the cats and the cats are like kind of looming kind of big to him because they're, you know, they're closer to his perspective. It was just, I, I, I think that's a neat thing. Yeah. I think it's cool. I think it is cool, actually. Uh, I'm curious to see what the real world quality is going to yeah. be like. Um, I know that there were yeah. some tests that were done. And surprisingly, all the video that was uh, processed from it were done on iPhones. So it's not actually the true <laughs> representation. Uh, I saw, I think The Verge did it and Engadget did it. Sure. And I was surprised. I'm like, well, why are you half-assing the review? You know? Be well, uh, well <laughs> I think you've just answered your own no. question. No. Um, I will say that, that what's that thing called? Snap or Clip or whatever. What's it called? The uh, that, Google Clips or something? I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Whatever it is. Like, I believe that that is one of the devices they announced yesterday that has you don't have to get a pixel right to use that thing. You can use any phone or whatever. Like I, I think it probably connects fine to an iPhone too, I believe. I mean, so even if it doesn't, whatever, it's still pretty open. So it's not like you have to have a, like be all Google everywhere uh, for this to make sense. Yeah. They also uh, Google lens will be on the pixel too. It'll be the first device. Um, the first phone with Google lens, Google lens, lens will yeah. be on the pixel first. That's it's right. But there. it will eventually be, yeah. Yeah, throw out Android. Yeah, yeah, it'll be throw out Android. Um, yep. You know, I, I'm, I'm still in the middle here, guys, and I would love your feedback. Uh, you could tweet me at Andrew Zarian. Let me know. I, I mean, I'm generally between the S8 Plus, the Note 8, and the Pixel 2 XL. I would get the big one. I, I need a new Android phone because my S7, I, I, I'm i going to tell you, I, I've said it for a couple of weeks now. Not very happy with it. I actually, I'm using my S6 again. That's how much I don't like my S7. Strangely, uh, I, I, I've gone back to the S6, so give me your feedback.
Uh, <laughs> I just want to know. Yeah, you know, sorry. I want to know what people think because it, it's, you know, this is a really good problem to have in the Android ecosystem, right? The fact that we have more than one phone to say, which one do I get? Normally, it's always been like, this is the flagship, this is the phone, this is what we buy. But now you have the LG a flagship, the V30 something, right? Is it the V30? I don't even know. Is that the Android flag, uh, the the LG flagship, um, right now? Yeah, I'll scroll up here. I can't. Like you know, everyone else on Earth, Andrew, I have no idea what the LG HTC flagship. HTC has is a thing. good flagship. LG has a good flagship. Android. Well, by the way, the the Google Pixel XL, if I'm not mistaken, is using is based on the HTC, uh, HTC flagship, right? Yeah. It's got the squeezable sides and all that stupid stuff. Yeah. I love how they were like, you know, our researchers were looking at an easy way to. The easiest way to like summon the Google Assistant, and, and this is what we found was the easiest way. It's like, oh, it isn't because it was the reference design that HTC yeah, had yeah. to do. Yeah, you because already that's had literally it. the way they had it. <laughs> like, oh, that, so was, a little, that was a little disingenuous. So you didn't want to modify the phone. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, guys, we have so much more to talk about. I do want to talk about that HP event. Paul wants to talk about. Uh, the Apple backlash recently, uh, and uh, I, I have mm-hmm. a lot to say about this as someone that is in the. Uh, almost a hundred percent now in the Apple ecosystem. Even though I try to push away, I've actually fallen more into the Apple ecosystem over the last six months. Um, and as someone now that is probably engulfed in it, uh, I always say I'm engulfed in the ecosystem. Uh, I am not very happy with it, and mm-hmm. uh, luckily for me, the PC is doing uh, the PC platform has totally changed over the last couple of years. And there's so many different options. So I want to talk about all of that and a whole lot more. But I want to remind everybody, you want to, if you want to support the show, you could do so by going to patreon.com slash what the tech. Patreon.com slash what the tech. You can go there, fund us for as little as $1 per episode. And it helps us out. It, uh, I cut Paul a check yesterday, actually, two days ago. So see, people get paid here. People got to make money. Paul moved. i losing my mind. I have two kids. I got to buy diapers. See, this is how I guilt you into supporting the Patreon. I, I tell you, I need to buy diapers. Patreon.com slash what the tech. You go there, support us. Uh, and uh, we love you for doing so. So uh, let's talk about the HP event. So I am very, very much impressed. So I was there. <laughs> I was invited by the fine folks at HP. And uh, I, I had a lot of, you know, I got there really early and I had a lot of time with Mike Nash. And yep. I got to ask him all these great questions. I, I thought they were great. He probably thought they were uh, they were mm-hmm. stupid. But I, I asked him all these great questions, and I had a lot of time with their new Spectre lineup. Uh, the, Spec- the, the Spectre 13 is the one for me, I've decided. Yeah. Uh, so you were there. You actually had the next – you were in the next group after me. Mm-hmm. And we That's saw right. each other for a couple seconds, and uh, Dr. Pizza was there. And he told me, what the F are you doing here? Is that what he said? That's to you? what he said. Yeah, and you said, and you turned around to him, and he said, "Oh, come on." <laughs> so I don't know if the "Oh, come on" was, yeah, what the f are you really doing here? Or it was like, oh, hey, he's part of the tech group. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't like that kind of interaction. No, he's it was good. fine. No, I, we, he didn't we, mean it. He didn't mean it. Uh, we bust each other's either. chops all the time. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I, I didn't take it like that at all. But Dr. I think what I said like, was. They allow anyone in here, apparently. Yeah. Something. Yeah, yeah. There goes the neighborhood. Yeah. This is uh, this is the big. <laughs> this was the big moment. So, by the way, beautiful venue here in New York, uh, the Beek- Beekman Hotel. Uh, they had, you know, we went there and we, I, I, I saw their entire lineup, and it's, it's amazing that when you and I started doing the show together, one of our first stories was HP making the boneheaded decision of leaving the PC market. And <laughs> what right, a turnaround right. this company has made from that point over the last, you know, six, seven years, because this lineup is aggressively competitive with any other flagship out there. Probably, in my opinion, these are the best PCs right now. Uh, the two of the best PCs for me, especially. Uh, you know, I actually had a very interesting discussion about how much I like Lenovo to them. And they were very fascinated by, by my by my thoughts on Lenovo. But I have to tell you, I'm very impressed by this by this new lineup. I wanted to get your thoughts on what you think uh, of the, I guess, aesthetic upgrades and and the mm-hmm. the, the hardware upgrades. Because I, a couple of weeks ago, we mentioned that Intel is going to the quad core with their eight gen i sevens. They're going to right. they're going to quad core with their eight gen uh, processors. And yep. this is such a big story that 
very little people are concentrating their efforts on because the fact that now we have quad cores in i7s, in 13 inch form factor i7s, uh, this is huge. This is a major, major change in the way that we people consider buying PCs, uh, buying laptops. Yeah, I mean, I, a few months ago, there was a story about Microsoft and Surface and how they had rejuvenated the PC market with their Surface designs. And I was like, wait a minute. You know, there are companies like Dell and HP and Lenovo that have been doing this for years and years and have done an amazing job. And I would actually point to HP as the one that is maybe the most important of them. In fact, today they're the number one PC maker in the world, again. And the reason is that they've been innovating in this space in ways that I find to be really dramatic on the low end with stream laptops and the high end with Spectre and Envy and on the commercial end as well and also on gaming PCs yeah. now with Omen. So the Spectre X360 is kind of the flagship for this stuff. This is the third gen design they're on. I would actually call it fourth gen because they there was a... Uh, a midstream third gen, not the not this not the, not the eight, not the Spectre thirteen, but the X three sixty, right? Um, the two and one. Um, where where I, to me, this is the this is what's setting the pace in the PC market. This design and this new one is obviously the most beautiful yet. You know, they have that kind of dark ash gray copper accent uh, color scheme, which is beautiful and premium. Um, and now, of course, with the other device, the Spectre thirteen, which I think is the one you're interested yeah. in. They've added that kind of uh, white, like ceramic white and pale gold um, color scheme as well. Beautiful, yeah, very well right? done design. Very well done design. Yeah. Um, so when Mike Nash handed the laptop, it, you know, it was only me. I was so early, yeah. nobody else was there. So we handed the the Spectre, and he knew exactly what I was going to do. I was going to start, I was going to start typing on it immediately and testing out the trackpad. And he goes, "Okay, so what do you think?" Before I continue with this, I go, "I actually, I love it." And he handed me the Elite Book, and he goes, "What do you think of this one?" And he compare it to me, you know, because it has yeah. a different throw. I think one is one point three, and the other one is a one point five, um, almost uh, virtually identical. And and the keyboard was amazing. Um, and for me, I went to the Mac side. I went to the Apple side because I was so tired of inconsistencies in a PC world and in in flagship PCs with the keyboard and the trackpad. Where this was, I mean, I genuinely thought this is what brings me back, right? I, I've been using a PC for six months now. I, I'm really using this MacBook, uh, yeah. only for Photoshop and stuff like that. But now, if I have a quad-core processor in a 13-inch form factor and on the PC, I really have no reason to continue using this device. It, it's, the it's, MacBook, you mean? The MacBook, yeah. I, yeah. I really, yeah. I, I'm, I'm kind of, I don't really care for this anymore. It, it doesn't fit my needs. I, I'm, I, have the inconsistencies and the OS glitches and the hardware issues. It's, it's become too much for me at this point. Uh, you know, so right. I'm the perfect candidate to go back to a PC, which never happens. <laughs> you never well, go back. I mean, really? You I'm really not sure if it never happens, but sure. I mean, that's the that's the story, right? Do um, we? Is there any statistics? I'm actually curious on that. How many people leave a leave the PC, go to the app, go yeah. to the Mac side, and then go back? It so I would say historically, little. that's not been a big number. Um, I think over the past year, with the way that Apple muffed the MacBook Pro refresh last fall, and the simultaneous release of Surface Studio, which should have had nothing to do with it, but for some reason. Where these were like two things that were just kind of combined into a single story. Uh, since then, Microsoft say, says it has seen evidence of Mac users switching to Surface. Now, they provided zero numbers, you know, whatever, so we don't really know. Um, the guy that runs Surface, Panos Panay, will be appearing later this month in London. I'm looking forward to see if he says anything about that, and uh, we'll have to see. But I... Yeah, you're right. I mean, very typically, no, that doesn't that doesn't really happen. So personally, I would take the <coughs> excuse me the HP 13 over a Surface Book, uh, a Surface uh, laptop. Yeah, I, I really I, I really like the device, um, the thinness. Uh, I should be getting one soon, in here for review. Uh, they're also going to be sending me a couple other things. I I don't know if I have an embargo to talk about the Omen. <laughs> I'm almost convinced. I, 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 I convince myself I, I that I do. I don't believe there's anything secret about the Omen. Okay, so the Omen X. Uh, oh, you know, you can't talk about that. No, okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, no, can I? Can't I? Uh, I don't think. I think it's okay. Okay. Well, uh, it's it's a beautiful gaming. It's it's a. They're gaming shipping laptop. now to stores. Yeah, no, you can do it. You can. Do it. Uh, it's a gaming laptop, and 
you know, I'm not in that in that world, right? I'm not in the gaming world. Uh, now we're on Twitch, so we're going to be doing some gaming shows. So I, I thought this is a great way to kind of test it out to see, yeah, how how I like it. So I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to be doing that. The the um the surf uh the the thirteen the Spectre thirteen uh to kind of test out, and then I have a Lenovo coming in. Uh. Are you doing the 25th anniversary Lenovo? Are you going to test that yeah, out? I, I wrote it up today. Oh, you did? Yep. Oh, you did. How'd you like it? I like it a lot. It's um, old school, right? It's like the old yeah, way. Yeah, it is. It's it's funny. The Aside from the design elements, you know, it's got like a rainbow ThinkPad logo on it and stuff like that. Um, it has like the old keyboard, which is like seven rows, which is kind of crazy. Dedicated volume, audio controls. Um, but it's the old style keys. And even on like on that laptop today, if you actually buy like a, I think like a T470S, I mean, you kind of get the Nouveau style Lenovo ThinkPad keyboard, which is great, you know, but this one has the old one, which was perfect. And it is, it's kind of awesome. Like it's uh, I, I, I almost feel like I'm using it and I'm like, have I convinced myself that the new ones are fine or something? Cause you go back to that and it's like, holy crap. Like this is, it's almost like using a mechanical keyboard. It's really nice. Yeah, there we go. That, that, that will, that will have the exact Hold on. keyboard. On Hold it. on. That's right. <laughs> yep. So this is. So by the way, this is. Stop, 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 stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you, oh, Stop. Don't do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You were about to slide those latches to open the screen. Yes, I am. Right? That's what you were about to do. Yeah, right There's here. There's probably one on both sides, right? Or is it yeah. only one side? Uh, one side. One side. So when I took this thing out of the box, I actually reached for those latches. <laughs> I, 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 no, I'm not kidding. Like the muscle memory on ThinkPad was so strong I thought, and the other thing you can see on that thing you're holding yeah. is the battery bump sticking off the back. That battery is removable. There it is. And on that, on that, and so the same thing. I bet that battery would even look work on this new device. It's probably the same exact oh, connector. Curious. It's a giant. The battery. other thing you could do on that is pop out the optical drive, and you could put a battery in there as well. Oh, uh, let's see. Where do you pop the op? From here? Other side. No, the other side. Let's see. I don't think I can. Oh yeah, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. No, I can I pop No, you up? can. Yes, oh, you, you can. can. You can. Here's the yes, thing. you hold can. On. Hold <laughs> of on, course you can. It. Holy crap! I forgot you can. Yep, they make a battery that's the shape of the optical drive. So how does it anything. go? The, oh, here it is. You pull there it. There you go. Yep. yep. Oh, I know my ThinkPads, man. Yeah, look at this. I forgot about all of this. So this was my my true love. This was my favorite. Yep. Uh, do you know which series this is? If I open this up. So yeah, it's I hard to tell. It. For, it's it. It almost looks like. Wait, don't tell me. Yeah, don't tell me. So it's, I mean, it's so thick, but it could, I'm thinking it can't be a T-series because it's so thick, but I'm going to guess it's a T-series. It, okay. If not, it's it could be an R-series, which was the mainstream one, or it could be even a W, which is the worst. So I'll, I'll let the chat room kind of start mm -hmm. guessing because here it yep. is. I'm going to cover up what series this is. Uh, okay. Con says T-60. Yeah, T T. Con says it's, it's series T double. If it's a T series, it's a double digit. Like it's not a four something. It's a T fifty T sixty something in there. Yeah. Okay. So the answer is it is the T sixty series. It's a T sixty one, and this thing still works. It works so yeah. well that I am considering. So it's got to be a SSD Core two duo. It. Core two duo. Yeah. Probably four megs of RAM. <laughs> four. Gigs it had, of it RAM. actually eight gigs. Eight gigs of RAM. Eight gigs. Okay, yeah. that's. I want to. I want to put an SSD in this thing. Yeah, eh, it's probably not. And worth you know what? I could probably still use it. Yeah, but it's Core Two Duo is going to be seriously limiting. It's um, do you have a combination of USB two and three on there? No, there's no USB three. This there's is no before. USB yeah, so, so I it's actually that old. I have a I have a phone jack. Mm -hmm. I have an RJ forty five. I got a VGA USB, connector. I got a VGA connector. I got a giant heat sink here. A giant heat sink here. Uh, yeah. Let's see. What yeah, no, I, I have one of those in my cellar. Something very close to that. Yeah, this was, the, I mean, the, I love this one. This was awesome. Yeah, no, I mean, it, that was a laptop, right? And so the, it, when the, they actually, con, they made versions. In fact, this one I have is one of them. Um, they made like TS series. It was like TS. Yeah. Like T460S or something, right? And the S stood for slim. And the, that was, the, they used to call those ultra books. They're not, they're not ultra books. These things are almost an inch yeah. thick, but. They're, um, they, they started getting rid of legacy ports. So like you couldn't get like a VGA port or whatever, um, on the thinner ones, you know, and then eventually they went X, you know, X got really thin. Yeah. No, it was, it was my favorite laptop. That thing was awesome. Yeah. The thing was awesome. Um, so is it, how thin is the uh, 25th anniversary one? It's not super thin. It's, um, yeah. it's about, I don't remember the name. And I wouldn't want it to be, <laughs> I wouldn't want that thing to be. No, it's, it's. 
it's I think I want to say it's like three point seven two pounds. Like, you know, so it's um, oh, is that it? It's like the S. You know, like I said, the T S. You know, thing. It's it's oh the gosh. S you know, thinness, it's right? So it's not it's not that much slimmer than this. No, but Here, let it's me see if I could hold no, it. but it it, it is like they would have sold the T series in S and non S. No, it's significantly thinner than that. the The body is like half as thin as that. But what this thing is is like this thickness is about double the thickness of a typical ultrabook today, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's the reason why you don't see a lot of these full size ports anymore. Yeah, very very cool. Um, yeah, I, it's I, neat. I should be getting one of those to actually review too because I, I you know, I. <laughs> I was getting yelled at at HP. They're like, Where, "Where's your, where's your uh, elite book? Where, where's your, where's your HP? Where's your HP?" So, uh, so they had a very nice lineup. Uh, you can go to the website if you want any more information. I'm gonna have a review of the Omen. Did you play around with that other one that they have for the designers? For the designers, yeah, for like you mean the workstation. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, the workstation. Yeah. No, that was the one. That was actually the only surprise in that room for me. I'd never seen that one before. Yeah, I. I don't really have a need for it, so I didn't really pay attention too much to it. Um, but a lot of great stuff coming from them, so let, let's see what happens when I get mine. I hope it continues. I hope I continue liking it when I actually use it a lot more. Uh, let's talk about Apple, Paul. Actually, before we do, I want to remind everybody to go and sign up for Therat Premium. Go to therat.com and you can sign up for their premium service. Let me see if I can go here. Look, look at that. You can see a beautiful picture of Paul right here on the post. You could upgrade to a premium account. Just click right on the top over there, and you can sign up to be a premium member. Subscribe for as little as $64 a year, or you could pay 7 bucks a month. $7. That's a coffee here in New York. One coffee. $7. You can sign up at therot.com. You get access to his daily podcast with Brad. I know you guys are going to be doing some more, uh, some more interviews and things like that, but you get full access to the therot.com website. You get access to First Ring Daily, which is Brad and Paul's podcast. Premium forums, Therat Daily Newsletter, premium comments, and enhanced user experience. Go to therat.com and sign up. Uh, let's talk about uh, let's talk about Apple uh, just one more time. <laughs> I want I want to touch okay. on this iPhone story just one last time because the feedback I've been getting uh, is tremendous. Uh, a good friend of mine, John Prosser from Page Tech, made a video I mentioned a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. on why he hates Apple now. And this was an Apple guy. This was this was a Mac user. This it's was brutal. an iPhone user. And it's a very uh, reactionary uh, co you know, video based on what he thinks is happening to this company. Um, me, as someone that has been using a MacBook for 10 years, uh, I've been using an iPhone for numerous amount of years. I have to tell yeah. you, uh, they you want to talk about quality plummeting. Uh, just the constant software issues I'm plagued with. I get, you know, equivalent to blue screens all the time. I got kernel panics constantly on this new MacBook Pro. Uh, my iPhone, I have tremendous amount of UI glitches. I've even done a clean install of iOS. I blew everything away and I just started from scratch thinking maybe it's me. No, it's not me. It's the operating system. Did the same uh, on this laptop. Okay. Guess what? It's not me. It's the operating system. It's the hardware. Where did this fall apart? Uh, listen, Tim Cook was hand selected. It's not Tim Cook that's the problem here. It's not you see what happened when Steve Jobs left. You know, no, there there is a there is a much bigger issue here for Apple. Uh, right. One being the PC market is probably better now as far as hardware goes for these MacBooks. Uh, you could get more, if not you get equivalent, if not better hardware. On the PC side, mm -hmm. uh, the, really the only thing that they really, really have is a tablet side. Uh, nobody could compete with the iPad, still in my opinion. I don't care what Android tablet you throw out there every single year. It, it does not match what the iPad does. I, I still give that to them. The iPhone is still the iPhone, but you're starting to see the cracks oh, happening. Yeah, for a long time. For a long time, you but know, now it's for, very for me, it's evident. Yeah, this is, not, not, this is nothing new. This is a continuation of the problems. You know, last year... With the iPhone 7, you know, and the camera not being as good as the previous version was uh, kind of hard for me to take. Uh, like I mentioned, the MacBook Pro stuff from last fall was tough on people. Um, the iPhone 8 is now bursting at the seams. And the iPhone 10 has a notch in the top for some reason, as many have pointed out, even including some of their biggest fans, like a completely unnecessary and terrible design element. Yeah. Why would they ever do such a thing? Um, 
look, you know, the decline of Apple is inevitable. It's just you can't be anything but comfortable when you're such a, a juggernaut. I mean, it's what happens to everybody. It happened to Microsoft. Uh, it's happening now to Apple. So there are no danger of ever losing anything. I mean, they're humongous. They have so much money. They're going to be fine and all that stuff. But um, for sure, the the most interesting stuff in the industry, whether you're talking about phones or computers, is happening elsewhere. You know, there's no doubt about it. So uh, I don't see this as a new thing. I mean, I think this is just a continuation. I think it's inevitable. Um, it was maybe hastened by the death of Steve Jobs. Well, but to be, but to be fair, just to history, I mean, I don't know that Steve Jobs could have done anything to have prevented this either. So, so okay, so uh, so I I hate that that idea, right? Like the whole like, mm-hmm. well, if Steve Jobs was alive, you know, like, yeah. I, I think well, it's it's, 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 it's you, we have no idea because the PC market has totally changed, made a one eighty from the time Steve Jobs was alive. Uh, the market it, actually today is what is today six years. Or was it yesterday? Yeah, yep, six years. Six years year. today. Yeah. So in is six it today, years, literally today? It yeah. might be today or yesterday. It was, uh, I can't, okay. is it Whatever. the fifth? Six years, yeah. Someone, someone would be able to answer in the chat room. Doesn't matter. So <laughs> let, let's evaluate this, right? In six years. Yep. Six years ago, we're in 2011. Sure. The iPad, uh, was it the iPad 2? Yeah, it was the iPad 2 that was announced, which really changed, changed the tablet market mm-hmm. totally. Uh, the iPhone 4 was out. In 2011? Yeah. Am I wrong? Mm, I think it was 4S because the 4 yeah. would have been. Yeah, yeah, because he did the whole antenna, antenna gate, gate thing. He yeah. was around for that. Yes. Okay, so 4S. Uh, the what? The MacBook Pro is still king of the I'll Ultrabooks. Never, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, I, who knows what those okay. things are. So, so look, look at the market here. Yep. Now go forward six years. They well, have... But- <laughs> 5,000 iPhones. They have an iPhone okay, but, 5 version. They have an uh, iPhone 6 still selling. They have the iPhone but, 7 still selling. Yeah, Andrew, Andrew, Andrew. You, we're getting way too specific here. It doesn't matter. Um, if we were to go back six years from the time of 2011, it was 2005. iPhone hadn't happened yet. Their big bestseller was some kind of a weird iPod that no one even remembers anymore. I mean, the markets do change. I guess the, the point is just that Steve Jobs hit home run after home run after home run. You mentioned the iPad 2. Um, that was probably the high the high point of the iPad line. I, I, I may be off one version. I don't think it really matters. I'm trying not to be super specific here. But after a certain point, iPad sales slowed and then have declined. And they did they declined for like three years straight. Yeah. So they advanced to the point where they could. I think what happened was people figured out they don't really need that many of these things out in the world. They don't need to upgrade their iPad that often. So as good as it is, people just don't need these things. They're not super important. Um, so, you know, they look Apple, um, how many iPad twos do you still see out there? Think about that. I, Tremendous. I, I, okay. Every kiosk. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Oh, it's fine. Yeah. It, whatever. It was popular. Great. Yeah. But it's, you know, like this iPhone thing that they just released, I think this is going to be a disaster, but it's a disaster in Apple terms, right? Like this might be the first time year over year that an iPhone launch didn't outperform the previous iPhone launch. Like that's going to be huge. People are going to try to read into it. They're going to say, well, they didn't have the iPhone 10 and a lot of people were holding off and they're always willing to give like Apple the benefit of the doubt. But I really think that this is an inflection point for them. Like, I think this is the beginning of the decline. Like I, and, and for them, it, it, they're at such a lofty point. It doesn't, it's not, it's sort of not worth discussing because them declining is just not only inevitable, it's not super interesting. They're still going to be humongous, you know, like I looked up, uh, for some reason for, with, for, as part of a different conversation yesterday, uh, looked up how many Apple uh, or how many iPhones Apple sold in the previous quarter, right? So in the quarter before what was supposed to be like the biggest iPhone launch in iPhone history, Apple sold 41 million iPhones, you know, in a quarter, in a quarter. In like the slowest quarter of the year of what should have been the slowest quarter in their recent history because of all the anticipation over this thing that never happened. That wasn't that exciting when it did happen, rather. Um, they're, you know, okay. I mean, we people saying that they hate Apple or people walking away from Apple is the same thing as people saying, I don't like that band anymore because they became too popular. Yeah, you know? I, I agree. And, no, and I agree you know what? You, yeah. As a music lover or as a lover of technology, you're making a great point. You got to remember something though that that band is going to go on and keep selling millions and millions of albums, or you know, not today, but they're going to be super popular still. So it doesn't matter that you left, 
It doesn't matter that you, longtime Apple fan. I don't mean you, Andrew. I mean anyone, you know. No, no, just talk friend, to John, me. John just or whoever me. you're talking about. Um, I'm talking about John. I'm talking about Sunkast. Yeah, no, I know. I mean, I mean you global. You're like yeah, yeah. one. It doesn't matter what the royal one does, we, the like, royal, the, the royal, royal one in this case. Yeah, um, the royal you, I guess. The royal. Uh, it, it's yeah. I mean, I, I look. I, I I myself have made this kind of transition. I'm not like a big Apple guy, but I have been using an iPhone as my primary phone. While using Android on the side and using Android plus Google Fi while on the road internationally. Yeah. And I finally made that switch. You know, you, you don't see one of the things you'll, you could do this right now, like search for, um, uh, you know, switch from Android to IO or a iPhone. There's a lot of articles about that. But the one thing you don't see a lot of is what about switching from iPhone to Android? You know, no one ever talks about that because, because that's a rarity. I, 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 you know what, but I, is it? No, I, mean, I don't, I don't know, but in theory, it's a rare, I, I think. It was up until two years ago. Now it's a little different. That's switching from the Mac to the PC is the same rarity. I'm I'm saying maybe it happens. You know, some at times I get messages and people say, "Why does Paul do a show with that idiot?" And Uh, I agree with you most of the time. Thing to say, I get that all the time. I get that all the time, actually. But here, here's <laughs> why. Idiot? You and I, yeah, That's I'm a terrible that idiot. thing to say about anyone. I'm, I'm an idiot, apparently. I'm not an expert, <coughs> right? I'm You're an enthusiast an that knows yeah. more than most enthusiasts. I, I'm, I'm in IT. I do, you know, uh, Paul and I yeah. have spoken about this a thousand times. But I am not. I don't not, need to defend you, Andrew, but I, I will if I have to. I know. Defend. You know what? Go ahead. Defend me. I want. I would say of you the same thing that I would say of Leo Laporte, which is this. You have an incredible broad of knowledge of things and that it is unlikely, if impossible, that I would ever bring up some topic and you wouldn't be able to speak to it. Yeah, thank you. And Thanks. that's why we're doing Friends. a show. That is well, why I mean, I like you, but I mean, you're you're there. You know what I mean? It's you know, unfair. You know, I'm going to tell you, you and I have, the reason why we do this is because both of us subscribe to a very similar philosophy, and that's, this is what works for us, and this is what we use, and this is what we like. There is no loyalty to a brand. Unfortunately for you, unfortunately for you, though, people people associate Microsoft exclusively with you, and they think that you are some Microsoft guy. I've never heard someone be a Microsoft guy and be so critical <laughs> sure. of a company like you. Well, so, okay, but I, I, you're honest. there are two sides to that. I mean, my, th- when I came of age in the industry, Microsoft was the be-all and the end-all. It was the center of the personal computing world, so it made sense that I would follow Microsoft. Um, as the world has changed, obviously, I've kind of broadened out to look at other things. Some people have a problem with that, and that's you know too bad for them or whatever. But the one thing to give Microsoft some credit about is um, companies like Apple and actually I think Google as well are a lot more thin skinned about criticism than Microsoft is. Although I've, I've certainly had my run ins with them, PR, whatever. Um, but they understand, and I've had this conversation with them on multiple times at multiple t- points in time that, uh, they know I'm not coming from a point of maliciousness. Um, what I care about are the users. I'm not here to promote Microsoft. Yeah. I'm here to promote what I think is the most efficient way to do something, the best way to do something, whatever it might be. I want people to have success with personal technology, not struggle with it. And so if Microsoft is going to let you down, I'm going to be honest about that. And that's something that I think a lot of, you know, fanboy, you know, Microsoft centric or Apple centric or whatever centric blogs just don't do. They can't not be cheerleaders. I'll I'll tell you what happens. That's intellectually dishonest. I'll tell you what happens. And I don't, you know, I don't think people, I don't think most people defend Apple or Microsoft with this idea of I'm comfortable using something else. I think that the, the the defending and the apologists come from this idea of this is what I use and this is what I know. Right. I, I had this discussion. I was at Rattle and Hum and I don't wanna I don't wanna name the person, but it was a it was a journalist, tech journalist. Mm-hmm. I'm using quotes from a one of those big ones, you know? I'm not going to say it's Engadget. I'm not going to say it's Verge. I'm not going to say it's CNET, but it's like one of those guys, right? But I am saying it's one of those. I'm not going to say it's Ars Technica or Gizmodo, but Mm -hmm. it's one of those guys. I'm not going to say it was Peter Bright who works at Ars Technica, but, you know, maybe it was. I'm not going to say it's Peter Bright. Actually, it wasn't Peter Bright. Um, And I was having this discussion, and he was genuinely defending everything Apple did, right? I mean, just... Everything I said, the same well, complaints that could be about anyone. So you're not you're not really winnowing the field there. This is the problem with the. No, it could be anyone, and, and I'm going to tell you living. why. So he's defending. This is when I had the 2016 MacBook Pro, and I had the the plethora of hardware issues. I mean, this thing is defected. In my opinion, this entire 2016 yeah. MacBook Pro lineup 
was defected, and that is why they came up with a, a revision of it to fix all these yep. problems. Solder point issues, uh, video uh, card issues. They changed the processor. They changed the processor. The touch Remember when that thing work. came out, it was still... The was old this one. still Skylake? Is I, that I think we're on Skylake. No, we're on Skylake I know, now. I think they moved to Cabby Lake in the refresh. I think it was Skylake. It could have been Skylake. Yeah, it could have been. I think it was. So he's defending... All the he's like, well, if this these problems existed, you would hear a whole lot more about it, and everybody would be mm -hmm. experiencing. I said, okay, let me ask you this: Have you used one of these other than a reviewed unit? They go, no. I go, do you know anyone with one of these? He goes, no, no, I don't know, I don't know anybody with it. I said, okay, so the, the the reason why you're not getting these unbelievable outpours of complaints is because most people are not buying it. It's right. very expensive. Yep. The re and and the previous generation one is just good enough. You don't need it's worse than that, Andrew. It's worse than that because the thing is, a lot of people probably are having exactly the same problem you're having. They and here's are. What they are. But That's here's the what thing. happens: they go back to the Apple store and they say, hey, "I don't know what's going on. This thing and is they hand broken. them a brand new one. That's right. And and the new one is the new Rev. And that customer walks out of there with a shit eating grin on his face. He thinks he just got the best deal in the world. I can't believe it. Oh, uh, could I give Apple high marks on some consumer status? Yeah. Of, of course I can. I is bought there this some thing way I can give them 12 ago. stars out of 10? Yeah. And that's the story you hear. Yeah. Not that they make buggy, crappy no, products. The story, yeah, exactly. The story yeah. you hear no, I, is, that's, I don't way, have Apple care. Exactly I don't have sad. Apple care. And I went into Apple and I handed them an eight-month-old computer and they gave me a brand new one. God, they're amazing. So... And so we're, we're, I'm going back and forth, and I was getting heated in the discussion. You know, a couple, a couple <laughs> bottles of of rosé, and I get wild. Sure. So I'm going back and forth, and now I'm defending the PC as a Mac user, as someone that's been using a Mac for ten years, and I finally got the answer. I was like, I said, and he's he's crapping all over the PC, hardware issues, compatibility problems, blah 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 blah. blah. And I said, okay, I got a question for you. When is the last time you've owned? not used, owned a PC. And he right. said, 15 years ago. I go, right. your and there you go. Worthless. So you have, worthless. your opinion on this subject of this discussion that we're having right now is yep. uh, obsolete. It doesn't I exist. I had that exact conversation with a friend of my, a wife of my friend who, you know, said she left all the problems of the PC world behind, you know, years ago. And I said, well, hold on a second. I said, how long has it been since you've used a Windows PC? And I remember the answer, five, seven years, whatever. And I said, well, then you have no idea what you're talking about. I, you know, <laughs> do you, I mean, I'm sorry. Are you kidding me? You th do you think that we're all still struggling with PS2 ports and serial ports? And I mean, really, you know, that's, yeah. Well, you yeah. know, for me, and, and we spoke about this a while ago, this is the first time in my, I guess my, my, my Apple experience, right? Yeah. That I'm totally in the ecosystem. I'm totally in the Mac, uh, the cult of Mac. My, I have an, I use an iPhone every single day now. My sure. MacBook, I use every single day. My iPad, I use every single day. I use Apple TV every single day. And you know what I've realized? I absolutely hate it. <laughs> uh, there's so I, 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 I've, yeah. I've rejected the, the, the notion of I'm in the Apple ecosystem and that's Dude, what I should use. Let me tell you something. I, I, I can't, I, look, I can't not have an Apple TV because I've got so much content. What do the there. kids the say? I'm woke. Is great. Woke is what the kids say now. Woke? Woke. What does that mean? I don't know. That's what they say when they've realized what they what they're subscribed to is is wrong. Oh, okay, that makes a certain amount of sense. Anyway, I'm not a kid, so I don't care about that. <laughs> but <laughs> the, you know, my wife, I was away, what, probably some trip to New York. I don't remember whatever it was. But my wife tried to use the TV, and she says, you know, this thing doesn't work. And she, I'm like, what do you mean? She goes, I couldn't select anything. I couldn't move around. I'm like, did you use the touch screen thing, the touch thing at the top? She goes, what are you talking about? It's like a little touch thing at the top of the remote. She goes, this doesn't work. She was almost in tears. Like she was really upset about it. And I was like, well, you've seen me. You've seen, I've said to her, you've seen me frustrated trying to use it. Yeah. Like the navigate through TV shows and stuff and how terrible it is. And, um, I, you know, maybe the solution there is to get like a universal remote. Maybe the solution there is uh, not to use it so much. Okay. You know, like it's that shouldn't it's, be a solution. That, 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 that there's a problem if you need to get a universal way, remote. Right. In other words, what I just said. Yeah is the way those people think. Yeah. I'm not going to complain about how shitty it is. I'm just going to spend more money to fix a problem yeah. that Apple invented two years ago and still hasn't fixed, and for no reason. And listen, know? by the way, I'm not shitting on Apple. I, I, I still believe that they are, uh, they are the most consistent PC maker on the planet. 
Yeah. Right? They, in my opinion, they're still the most consistent. Because if you buy a MacBook and you buy a MacBook Pro, your user experience is still going to be almost identical. I, I, I genuinely believe that. You're not going to have more issues. I guess you are going to have more issues if you go to the higher. I, I mean, my 2017 is fine. But you, you're, if you have an iPad Pro and you have an iPad, you're still going to have a very similar experience. So th- that, that as far as that goes, Apple's still king with. What they are losing ground is you, uh, design. Uh, you know, they're not, they're not a game changer. They, uh, every other manufacturer out there right now is doing something better than them, which uh, was not necessarily a, a concept that everybody had. Uh, they, they've really got taken a step backwards here. And what is the solution? You know, I generally hope that this thing is a flop. The next iPhone. <laughs> I generally yeah. hope that not because I want Apple to fail, because I want them to kind of have a wake up call and say, wait a minute, adding this notch on the top of this thing is ridiculous. What the hell are we thinking? You know, I, I don't know. Uh, do you, do you believe that? Do you, I mean, is that something that you subscribe to? As far as should they fail in order to realize to have an, this this awakening moment, saying, "Oh my God, we kind of dropped this ball on this MacBook. The Touch Bar sucks. Uh, like mine just started glitching out constantly now. It just freezes. Right. I lose total control of the volume. No, you know, Apple's got a big problem because the truth is, um, they they're not going to fail hard enough to make the radical change they need to make, right? Like I said, they're too humongous. They're, they're, there's an inertia thing occurring. There are going to be people who buy their crap and, and put up with it, just like we were talking about, because that's what they're used to. They don't yeah. know how to complain. They don't know how to give bad feedback and explain the truth about what's really happening with these products, yeah. and it's it's going to be a slow boil. And so you know, that's the Titanic didn't just hit an iceberg and sink. It hit a Titanic, and it sank like many hours later. It takes a long time for something like that to go down. And that's what's going to happen to them. They, they don't have an extinction moment. And they won't extend. No, they won't. I mean, listen, they they have more money than most countries. That's what I mean. They can't fix it because they're not, they, you, you have to be, you know, when you're that fat and comfortable, it's, you know, you're not, you're not going to turn on a dime. It's just not going to happen. And I get how that happens. They can't fix it. There's nothing they can do. You want to talk about it on a smaller level. You know, I run this company. I, I have, X amount of shows every week. I, you know, I'm doing this. And at times I've gotten fat and comfortable and my viewership has started going down and I'm not being <laughs> different. I'm not changing. And then you have this moment you say, oh crap, I got to do something and you evolve and you continue doing it. It happens to everybody. It, it's a, it's, yeah. it's just normal that, for that to happen. But as a Mac user, as an Apple user, you can't follow blindly as any any kind of user hp you know I, i'm t- i'm praising hp right now because i generally think they're doing great things you can't go look at a company and have loyalty to a brand that is crazy to me you have loyalty to good products if that's what works for you that's what you should be loyal to i don't subscribe to that philosophy of i'm a mac user so i have to defend apple unapologetically <laughs> sure and i encourage apple users to say listen guys this isn't working there's a problem here. Yep. Yeah, That's the honest. only way change happens. Yep. With that said, Paul, talking about change, you got to leave. Yeah, I'm really excited about that. But <laughs> you have yes. a meeting to go to. We were having <laughs> yeah. a good conversation. This was a good show. <laughs> Actually, yeah. I think I need to get. So I, I will, I'll just prep yeah. the future here by saying I, I have an article in, in the works that's about how, how and why Google is going to destroy Apple. And it's related to what we were just talking about. So I should have that up sometime the next day or two, but the Google has huge advantages over Apple and they, they are advantages that Apple cannot overcome. And it was on full display at this week's event. Um, so there's nothing they can do. Apple's just this big fat, happy target and they're just going to wallow in it. And you know, they'll sell a lot of phones and stuff and whatever they'll continue. But I think the excitement has moved on. Yeah, absolutely. I a hundred percent agree with you. We will continue this again. We're going to take a little break from this subject for, for a week. Uh, but obviously, send us your feedback. You can email us. You could uh, tweet us. Uh, I, I love hearing from you guys and what your reaction, because you, the viewers, are the ones buying the products. So I want to hear from you. You can follow Paul on Twitter at The Rot. You can follow me at Andrew Zarian. What the Tech GFQ on Twitter as well. You can subscribe to the podcast where everywhere podcasts are available. And I encourage you to subscribe, audio and video, where whatever device you're on. 
You can subscribe on that and support us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash what the tech. Uh, Paul's going to go, but I'm going to stick around for another 10, 15 minutes and hang out with you guys and talk about uh, some more technology stuff. I want to talk a little bit more into detail about what I'm using and why I'm using it. And uh, that's it for this week. Take care.